What is up? It's Vicky Hunter, and today we're going to talk about the release of what I think about the 970, the Garmin 400 970. I don't have one. I'm not getting one because uh, of a few factors. Wanted to share what I think about the upgrades and the features and the cost and give it sort of in a summary bullet and how it compares to the 965 and just where I think it fits in the landscape today. So with that, we're just going to dive into what are the feature upgrades. If you are new to this channel, I test devices for the purpose of CrossFit or higher, higher intensity intensive inter interval training. And within that, I always am looking for devices that have recovery and wellness and features that help you keep up with a high training load. So the Garmin suite of families fits right in with that. And so what, where does the 970 fit in with that? So we're going to compare it now, looking at it compared to hypothetically the Phoenix, um, I'm sorry, the Epix Pro. So this is the 51 millimeter Epix Pro. So this is what we're going to sort of highlight and compare some of the features that we would see on the 970 just to talk about them conceptually. So the first is the flashlight. I think this is a definitively awesome feature. I think this is a feature that I actually will have to have for the rest of my life is I have to have a flashlight. You just click it on. It's exactly the same as it is on the 970. Additionally, you have the new Elevate 5.0 sensor. So the Elevate 5.0 sensor, number one, has um, six diodes or yeah, six diodes for heart rate tracking in a workout. It only turns the middle two on when you're doing generic life. So you're going to get the same physiological tracking as you would on the 965 or any of the old Elevate 4 point sensor, but the workout's going to be more accurate as well as you have a skin temperature sensor. And we'll talk about why that's not that important as well as ECG, which I don't find um, that useful, but that ECG is available in the 970 it is not on the 570. Additionally, they've added Sapphire glass, which I think is a good addition. We'll talk about it in a little more detail relative to the domed glass that was gorilla on the 965. What are some of the minor upgrades? So the minor upgrades is going to have a mic and a speaker. So you'll have a speaker over here. It's going to have softer tones. Um, my experience on the Phoenix 8 with the mic and the speaker wasn't super stellar. It wasn't useful. Um, as well as you're going to have an update to the user interface. So it's going to be sort of like the in-between the 965, which does have a different look to the user interface, coupled with a little bit of the flair of the Phoenix 8 series. Um, Outside of that, when you go to the 965 to 970, they're going to look very, very similar. Both going to have a titanium bezel, both going to have a plastic back, both going to have the dome sort of top. They're both going to have the same 47 millimeter casing, the same basic thickness, a little minor difference on the thickness, little minor differences on the weight, um, same 1.4 inch AMOLED screen. A lot of the things are also software related that came to it. So we're not going to be able to look at it on here because this doesn't have any of those software features, but it's got a nightly report, which is a summary of the day and a projection for the next day. It's got setting migration, which is kind of a neat tweak. If you have a 965, you can just migrate all your settings over. And then all of the rest of the software are primarily running focus. It really is truly owning up to the title for runners, which is kind of a bummer because it should be for everyone and also runners. But all the features, like the higher end software features are runner based, but they're also where heart rate sensor, new sensor dependent. So they're not that fabulous. So on the runner side, one tweak for the triathletes is it does have some specialty training features for triathletes, but the running things. The things that I think are the best are two, the running tolerance, sort of as you look at your volume over time, how much, how many mileage can you put on your body within your general tolerance range, a projection of that, that's actually helpful. And then a load impact factor, which you're doing a lot of uphills and downhill, how much that downhill load on your knees, on your body would have a factor in how much your recovery time is needed and how much workload you did. Um, everything that's also sort of cool is strap dependent, a new $160 strap. So I kind of look at it as like those don't exist. The two are running um, economy and the speed, step speed loss. If you, have to have, if you have to have a $160 sensor, then it's like it doesn't exist. But so those are the things that it includes. So what do I think of the 970? What do I think in the landscape? You know, this watch right here, this Epix Pro, I bought on eBay used for, I think, $565. If you were to look at the 965 at $600 versus this new 970 at 750 you have to start to think, what are the differences? So I am a huge person when it comes to the flashlight. I think that is a big difference. But none of the other reasons would be a reason necessarily to upgrade. 
I think they are nice features, but for $150 more, I don't think it screams up upgrade worthy. Um, the Sapphire glass, I feel like is important because it had a dome glass before and they needed to go Sapphire to have this sort of protection longevity. It, you, whether you're paying $600 for a 965 or not 750 for a 970, you don't want to scratch it. You don't want to ding it. You don't want to crack the glass, especially. So Sapphire makes sense with the domed. But when I look at the 970 versus the 965, it, it just, it just looks like the same watch with a couple of tweaks, a couple of feature differences or even casing differences, but it's still going to have a plasticky feel. The titanium bezel that was on it before still is not going to make up for the fact that it feels like a plasticky watch. Now that's lighter. So that might benefit. Um, and then the elevate 5.0 sensor, what do I really think of that? Now I do CrossFit and high, higher intensity interval training, and I, in no way, in no way, Trust the Elevate 5.0 to get the heart rate accuracy, accuracy correct. There's times where I just don't put on a chest strap because I'm doing low steady state workouts and it still doesn't quite have accuracy like where it's 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 like 10 beats off and then I'll take it off and put it back on and then it'll adjust 10 beats down. Um, so I don't trust the Elevate 5.0 for anything rigorous. Now, if you're just doing running, then you could rely more on the Elevate 5.0. Or if you're doing indoor cycling, maybe a little about out outdoor cycling. It has worked well for a number of people, but I don't think it's necessarily. Oh, and then within the Elevate 5.0, you get skin temperature. That They're not using it. Like Whoop uses skin temperature as a primary metric for your recovery and a primary indicator of sickness. Garmin doesn't it's like buried in the sleep settings, what the skin temperature is. So it's on there, but it's useless in the functional world. Secondly, the ECG. Now that's particular to a few people, but if you don't have ECG issues, you don't really ever use it. You don't ever spot check it. It just doesn't ever become a thing that's a factor. So that doesn't help. So really in my sense, because I use a chest strap for every workout and then if you're not in a workout, it's got the same diodes coming on as you would on the Elevate 4.0. So the 5.0 is not that big a deal for me because for workouts, is, which is when you would need a better heart rate sensor, I use a chest strap and I think that's actually the way to go. So it really comes down to flashlight and sapphire glass. All the other features, mic and speaker I wouldn't use, user interface is not that much different in my opinion. Same size and design as the 965. The nightly report might be cute, but all the other features are running based. So at the end of the day, for me, it boils down to a flashlight and sapphire glass. When you can get a used 965 for probably $500, $450 on eBay, or um, at least the, at the most $600, it's just a hard sell to jump to that 750 because right now there's a sale on Phoenix 8 that takes it down $200. So that's like 900. So like, that's just upper echelon. And for $750, I wish they had done more. So that's my summary. That's my take on what I think of the feature upgrades with the 970, what I think it, where it stands, if it's attractive to me, and it is not something that I would buy and test because it's not something I would really use. I don't think it adds enough value. And this channel is not supported by anybody. So I've got to buy all my own stuff and then buy it and resell it or whatever I'm going to do. I don't think it's hot enough to really see an upgrade or a purposeful change. So I'm not testing it myself. I wanted to share the thoughts on what I think about the features and the functional things. Side note, if you are into looking for a purchase, you know, the Elevate 5.0 sensor is better and the flashlight is cool and the sapphire glass is nice. So if you just happen to have a lot more money to spend on a watch, it's still a nice design. It's got the biggest screen to casing ratio of all the watch. You get a big screen for a smallest case ratio, um, but just not, not any reason to upgrade and not premium enough to, to merit the $750 cost structure. So with that, it's a thick gear hunter. Thanks so much for watching.